Give thanks to the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Well, good morning and welcome to Chapel by the Sea on this beautiful Thanksgiving Sunday. I hope you guys are all ready for the week ahead and and planning to spend some good time with family and friends around the table giving thanks for all that God has done. If you're new here, I invite you to pull out the card in the pew rack in front of you, fill it out, drop it in the plate so we know how to reach out to you. Um, We also will have an orange juice fellowship, and Joe, we have the best orange juice in all of Florida, isn't that right? It's Spike, but I believe we do, yeah. Okay, all right. So enjoy uh, some fellowship, some good orange juice um, after the service today. Have you been grocery shopping? Or? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, you just haven't gotten into the yeah, car Yeah, I forgot to okay. put it in the car earlier. Right. Well, obviously, we're still collecting um, for RCS, for the food pantry. Um, but we haven't, if you, if you neglected to bring anything and you still want to contribute, you have until noon on Monday. So take the morning off from work and come see us with your stuff. All right. All right. So yesterday we had a remarkable day during our annual Rise Against Hunger. We had about 80 people here and we got her done. About two hours we packed 15,000 meals. So if you were there yesterday, don't raise your hand, but get out the hairnet that, uh, that you had and, and simply put it on your, on your head like that. I don't want to mess up my hair, so I... <laughs> this is my DJ hat. Yeah, yeah, that's a good look for you. I like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, wave it around or put it, I know some of the ladies were like, oh, my hair, but yeah, I see you waving those. Uh, Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming out. It really was a great day. We had a ton of fun, and uh, someone said that maybe when we were done with these that we could just kind of do it like you do it in the Navy, right? All right, so uh, you can can do that. (laughs) So how many who are here uh, attribute the music for the speed at which we put those together, right? All All right. Excellent. He's so proud of his music choices. <laughs> My first DJ job. <laughs> yeah, three songs, three songs over and over and over again. It's great, Joe. It's fantastic. Next one's yours. I'm up. Yeah, you're up. Mm-hmm, it's yours. Health fair. How many are planning <laughs> to uh, be at the health fair today, right after church? Small group, but you're, some of you are coming. I was curious though about we're doing several things: blood pressure screening, we're drawing blood. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for diabetes screening. For diabetes. You're right. Thank you. Right. I was curious, though, for the guys, a little shy. I'm a little shy for this, but they're doing a prostate exam. There's a oh. screen. <laughs> right well, that was it. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, just in case you were wondering. But this could be my last week here. I'd, uh, Stick uh, around for the health fair. No yeah. prostate exams, we promise. Well, Dee worked hard on this, so yes. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about Man's Search for God, Joe? Yeah, how many are planning to be here? This is a little bit of a conflict with the program, but maybe you can get your blood pressure taken and whatever screen you want to do. Um, and then join us in the boardroom for uh, looking at Beyond the Big Bang. This is what we're starting. This is our third session this week. How many are here to attend session number three? All right. If you, if you hadn't been before and you'd like to come today, um, it's, a, it's an outstanding film we're about to watch, so you're welcome to join us. All right, next Sunday, I hope you'll come and stick around afterwards because we're going to deck the halls. We're decorating the church for the holiday season, so stick around. We'll need about 15 or 20 of you to help us do that, and that'll be next Sunday. There is a light luncheon provided if you'll stick around. And now let me introduce to you our board president, Chris Brown, who has a couple of special announcements to give you. So, Chris, see if you can join that act, okay? All right, good morning. So uh, we have some good news to share with you this morning. Um, you'll notice in your uh, bulletins as you, as you came in, we started a capital campaign, uh, I don't know, many, many months ago now. And, you know, we talked last week a lot about how long our church has been here and that, you know, you have a facility this large and, a little, you know, this many years on it, we need some capital improvements, and so we needed that. And we went out and we found the Jacobson Fund was there for us but there was a little bit of a catch, right? We needed, they wanted to see that the congregation was in on this as well. And so we set a goal of 150,000 and they said they would put two, two, another 200,000 on top of that for us. Well, the good news is, um, with the generosity of a lot of people in this room, we surpassed 150,000 this past week. Yep. <laughs> 
So you'll notice in here we actually got 154,000, um, and so that all in puts us to about 350,000. That sounds like a lot of money, and it is, believe me. But when you have a facility this big with this, some of the projects we have to take on, I hope you understand, it's going to go pretty quickly. But we want you to see some of the things that we're doing. Some of the things that we've already done you may not see. Some of the audiovisual, if you ever watch us on YouTube afterwards, every one of these uh, is, uh, is recorded. And so that's already been done. And then, let's see, after service next Sunday, they're going to break ground on something that's very critical to everybody in this room. The bathrooms. <laughs> All right, so the bathrooms are going to get completely renovated from top to bottom. Everything is, that's in there is coming out, and all new is going in, and uh, we'll just want to hang out in there from now on, so we'll, uh, we'll enjoy that. So that was that. The other thing I wanted to share with you briefly this morning, and then we'll get on with our service, is uh, my tenure as your board president uh, is coming to an end. Um, they have uh, term limits, just like they do in, in Washington. So that will be ending, but also there's some other board members that are uh, leaving the board. We actually have uh, three officer positions and I think another three board positions that we really need to fill. And I have to tell you, um, you know, probably one of the best things I did is get on the board initially and then certainly uh, being the president of the board has been just an honor and a pleasure, I have to tell you. Um, we need some help, okay? Um, Mr. Johnson's agreed to chair my uh, nomination committee, so we have to get some people together. So I'm going to use these cards. So seriously, if you're in the room and you're looking for a way to get more involved and help us, we need your help, genuinely. And it is a great experience. And I will tell you, as somebody who has a full-time job, I promise you, um, you can still do this. And it's, it's something you can do, and I really need your help, all right? And so I'm gonna, we're going to use these cards here this morning to help Mr. Johnson identify people who are interested in helping us. So if you're interested in serving on the board in any capacity whatsoever, or if you're just interested in being on our nominating committee, because I need, still need to fill a few positions for that, I need you to take this card, please. It's right in front of you. Nobody's moving. Look at the card, please, right in front of you. Okay? And, and just put your name on here, and what I'm going to ask you to do, so we know you're not a new member, obviously, is just on the top, if you would write um, either nominating committee or board member, whatever you're interested in helping us do, we really appreciate that. Put that in the uh, offertory place as they go around later, and we'll be happy to get those names to Mr. Johnson. He'll reach out to you and see what we can do to help uh, take care of that. So I really, really need your help. Um, as she mentioned, you know, all the things that happened yesterday and all the things that we do here does not happen without volunteers. Okay, this church shuts down without volunteers, and so this is one of those ways that you can volunteer and help me out. All right, thank you very much. Let's get on with our service. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And um, his term is not ending because of his singing last week, just so you know, okay? Thank you so much. Today's a chance for us to think deeply about gratitude. Of course, Thanksgiving, we do that. It's the quintessential time that we give thanks, but it's also a deeply... Uh, enriched uh, tradition in the Christian faith. It's a spiritual discipline. So we're going to think deeply about that. And as we do, I think that it might just help us in more ways than we know. So let's open our hearts and minds to God. Let's give thanks from the center of who we are to the God who has given us everything. Let's worship the Lord together.
Together, let us uh, do the call to worship responsively. It's a beautiful thanksgiving prayer, if you would. For the wide sky and the blessed sun, for the salt sea and the running water, for the everlasting hills and the never resting winds, for trees and the common grass underfoot. We thank you for our senses by which we hear the songs of the birds and see the splendor of the summer fields and taste the stale fruits and rejoice in the feel of the snow and the smell and the rest of spring. Grant us a heart wide open to all this beauty and save our souls from being so blind that we pass unseeing when even the common thorn bush is aflame with your glory. O oh God, our creator, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Together, let us call on God. O oh God, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you richly bless us with all that we need, bread from the earth and the bread from heaven, which gives life to the world. Grant us one thing more, grateful hearts to sing your praise in this world and the world to come. Amen.
You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Ooh, you're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy, my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and the light when the nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears. When I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold my hand. Sweet, blessed Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You, you, you're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do, oh Jesus. You're the center of my joy, my joy, my joy, my joy, Jesus. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you, 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 you're the heart of my contentment, oh, for all I do, Jesus, Jesus, you are the center of my joy, Jesus, Jesus, you are the center of my joy, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are the center of my joy, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are the center of my joy, Jesus. You're the center of my joy, 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 Jesus. You're the center of my joy. almost feel like I've had a sermon already. <laughs> As we express our thankfulness tangibly this morning, let us be generous in our morning offering.
Let us pray together. O oh God, our Creator, you hold the mysteries of life and death, of the planets in their orbits, of black holes and dark matter, of energy, of gravity, quantum physics and field theory. We worship you. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have shown us the way to wholeness, the path of sacrificial love, of care for the marginalized, the widow, the orphan, of nonviolent resistance to systems that oppress. We adore you. Holy Spirit, our sustainer, you indwell us with your power. You illumine us with your wisdom. You inspire us to break free from ego and find our true selves in you. We breathe you. We come broken, make us whole. We come wanting, make us fulfilled. We come weak, make us strong. Help us care for one another, the loved as well as the despised. Help us recognize your love, which has no bounds, and help us claim it for ourselves, that we might share it with the world all around. And may your peace, which passes all understanding, find its way through the noise of our lives as we offer our worship this day. And now as we offer our silent prayers to you. And now let us pray the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
You may be seated. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, beginning with verse 11. You can find this on your pew Bible, page 852. Now hear the word of the Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Thanks be to God for the reading of God's word.
He was one of those people. You know the kind, not exactly upper crust. You get my drift? He was an outcast. The restaurateurs, the shopkeepers wouldn't let him come in. He was dirty. Even the priest wouldn't let him in. But as he and nine of his closest leper friends saw Jesus from a distance, they cried out, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus told them to go on their way. Didn't heal them on the spot, if you noticed. Told them to go and present themselves to the priest who had the power in that society to declare them ritually clean. So that's what they did. And as they made their way to see the priest, they were healed. They were cleansed. It was a miracle. So they saw the priest, and the priest said, you're healed, you're clean, you, you can now be reinstated into society, into your family, to your vocation. You have your dignity back. And you would think with all of that, that all ten of them would have gone back and given thanks to the one who had made them clean, but not nah. only one, the Samaritan. And he came back to Jesus and he prostrated himself and he said, thank you, Lord. And Jesus said, were, was it me or was, was there just, were there ten of you? Where are the other nine? And then Jesus says something quite curious. He said, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Ten lepers were cleansed, but only one was made well. Now, I want to stop right there and and chase a rabbit for just a moment because the word that Jesus uses in that passage It's an important word in the faith. It's the word sozo, transliterated S-O-Z-O, sozo. And and it can be translated from the Greek three ways. Made well, like Jesus uh, said in the passage in the translation that we read together. Made whole, which is the King James Version. It's my favorite. Your faith has made thee whole. Or the other way you can translate that is the word saved. Your faith has saved you. In the tradition I spent much of my life in, a lot is made out of this idea of salvation. Get saved or you're going to spend eternity in a place that's a lot hotter than clear water in August, if you get my drift. But this word can be translated in three ways, made well, made whole, or saved. And I don't think Jesus had in mind this leper's eternal destiny. I think he wanted this man to experience the abundant life that John 10.10 10 says he came to give us. Your faith has made thee whole. What did Jesus mean when he said that? The Bible doesn't really unpack it for us. We don't hear any more about this man. So I've turned my attention to the social scientist of this day. Maybe there's something we can learn there about what Jesus meant about being made well through gratitude. There have been lots of studies over the past 15 or 20 years where social scientists have studied people and their levels of gratitude compared with their level of joy. And almost invariably, they decided that gratitude makes people well. It increases our well-being to be grateful in three distinct areas psychologically, is one. Grateful people have more energy, are more alert, and even happier. Gratitude helps us physically. Grateful people exercise more, they get better sleep, and did you know that it even can decrease blood pressure? This is all science, right? This is social scientists have studied this. Third way that gratitude can help us is socially. Grateful people feel more connected. 
They exhibit more pro-social behavior. They're nicer. (laughs) And grateful people feel less isolated, less lonely. You know how they determine this? They do what they call gratitude interventions. So they'll have people, uh, one way to do it is through journaling. They'll have people journal their thankful thoughts over a period of time, and they'll test them at the beginning and at the end for their levels of well-being. That's how they, that's one of the ways that they test this. So I got the brilliant idea, if I do say so myself, to try this out in a church setting. None of these studies had ever been done in a church setting. So a few years ago, the church I served in Tennessee, I did this program called 40 Days of Thanks, and I had folks participate and journal their thankful thoughts for 40 days in a row. Walters, did you participate by chance? You didn't participate in my study? All right. They journaled their thankful thoughts for 40 days in a row, and I tested them at the beginning and at the end for their levels of well-being. And guess what I discovered? Same thing every other researcher had discovered. The folks who participated were happier. They felt better about their lives at the end of that study than they did at the beginning. That was the quantitative stuff. You want to know qualitatively what they, what they said? They said they didn't notice they felt any happier, but they did notice an increase in awareness. An increase in God's goodness all around if we would but open our eyes to that. So all that, the result of all that, mainly is that I got to put a DR in front of my name. I got my doctorate because that was my research project. And this book was published on that. And I'm going to read this whole book to you now. (laughs) This book spent zero days on the New York Times bestseller. So supposedly I'm this expert now, right, in gratitude. You know, I don't feel like much of an expert. And the reason why is because it doesn't help to know a lot about gratitude. You actually have to do it. You actually have to practice it. You actually have to do gratitude in order to be grateful. Did you know Socrates said, to be is to do? And Jean-Paul Sartre said, to do is to be. And Frank Sinatra said, do be, do be, (laughs) do. That was for free. (laughs) Maybe a more helpful quote is from a gentleman named William Arthur Ward who said this. Feeling thankful and not expressing it is like wrapping up a present and not giving it away. Gratitude unexpressed is incomplete at best. So there are folks who say, well, you know what, I would be more grateful if I were, if I were happier, you know, if things went my way more. Wrong. One of the preeminent scholars in the Christian faith working in the field of gratitude. His name is David Steindl Rast. And he says that we're not not grateful because we're happy. We're happy because we're grateful. Did you catch that? We're not grateful because we're happy. We're happy because we're grateful. A couple of months ago, I joined some of you at the Peace Cafe, and you heard me tell this story, but it didn't sink in, so I'm going to drive it home today for the rest of the crowd. In World War II, there was a devout Dutch Christian family named the Tin Booms. Corey and her sister Betsy were the daughters of the family, and they were arrested for hiding Jews in their home. And they were sent to the concentration camp at Ravensbrück. And the only thing that they were able to carry with them was their family Bible. And so they read from it every single day. Betsy and Corey Ten Boom, they're together. And one morning they turned to a passage in 1 Thessalonians that said this. Give thanks to God in all circumstances. 
And they were like, here we are at a concentration camp, God, really? But they carried that message throughout the day, and later that day, they were assigned to a new barracks there at the concentration camp. A space designed for 400 now held 1,400 emaciated women. Beds, squares really designed for four now held nine. Sewage overflowed, the straw mats were rancid, and to top it all off, fleas. Corey looked at Betsy and said, how are we ever going to get through this? And Betsy said, we'll give thanks to God in all circumstances. That's what we'll do. So together they prayed a prayer of thankfulness, thanking God for everything they could think of. Think of. So they pr- praised God for the, the opportunity for them to be together through this experience. They thanked God that they had their Bible from which to read every day. They thanked God for the 1,400 women with whom they could share their faith. But then Betsy thanked God for the fleas. Corey said, that's it. Not even God can convince me to thank him for fleas. Betsy said, Corey, thank God in all circumstances, not just the pleasant ones. And so reluctantly, Corey and Betsy prayed together, thanking God for the fleas. Well, in their new barracks, Corey and Betsy began to lead worship services. They would read from their family Bible, and these 1,400 women with whom they shared barracks would join them, and they would fearfully sing and praise and share testimony And they were so terrified at first, but as they kept going, they realized that no guards ever came around. Everywhere else in the camp, they were under strict surveillance, but here in the barracks, they had complete freedom. And it would be a few weeks later when they learned the reason why guards never came in the barracks. Fleas. Thank God in all circumstances, even fleas. Today, you have the opportunity to go to a health fair here at the church. I thank God for our parish nurse, Dee Dee, who put this together. She's brought in other medical professionals. In a, in a survey, I think you took last year before my time, You said you would like this, and and understandably, we care about our health. Most of us want to have health and well-being, don't we? So you can be screened for diabetes, you can have your blood pressure checked, you can talk to a chaplain about an advanced directive, flu shot, all these are good things. But maybe the preacher has something to offer by way of health and well-being. There's something to this gratitude thing, folks. Science has proven it over and over and over again. Grateful people have better well-being. So in addition to getting your flu shot, give thanks to the Lord. Not just on Thanksgiving Day either, okay? Give thanks to the Lord every single day. The medieval Christian mystic Meister Eckhart said, if the only prayer you ever pray is thank you, that'll be enough. So friends, give thanks and be made well. Give thanks and be well.
I am thankful for you, my dear friends. Now may you be thankful people so that you can experience the riches of abundant life. Give thanks and be well. Amen.